My name is uh, Henrik Vipsko, I'm from uh, Denmark. I do uh, clothing, I do music, I do uh, textile exhibitions, I do uh, design costumes. Today I spoke a bit about uh, how mistakes and falls actually can have a really important part of the design process and how uh, that actually sometimes is, is the element that makes the whole project maybe stronger. I use uh, in my process of being creative, uh, whatever ever I'm building an exhibition or uh, signing a collection, I used mistakes and, and faults a lot, like how you suddenly uh, ending up with a wrong color or a supplier is sending yellow and it was supposed to be a, a rusty brown pan tone and you get a completely thing and how you have to deal with it. And that's what's really interesting and I think what's important for, for, for some of the young people here is that you can actually, mistakes and faults are really important for the human mind to be uh, uh, creative. Because um, if you just go from A to B, then you're becoming a bit computerish. Genius elements or perspective of being a creation person actually comes from wrong thoughts or D-tracks or going the wrong way. I talked a bit about like a, a project where I was supposed to do like a, a mountain of big, wet, shiny boobies. And we were producing uh, foam boobies in uh, like some uh, forms for two months. And we were calculating, okay, every 10 minutes we can do three trees. So we, if we go, keep on going for, you know, two months, then we have a mountain and the models could be presented in a in like a mountain of boobies. The whole collection was the perspective of Mother Earth. We all been there, um, getting milk, most of us. Uh, sexuality, there was all kind of different practices, uh, perspectives, uh, religious, uh, culture, uh, on that booby collection. And now we're standing with this, uh, like there was no mountain, it was just like a little, uh, and we had uh, 40 models and then this little, uh, okay, there was 2,000 of them. And that mountain never didn't happen. You know, it never looked, even that we had two, three thousand boobies, it was more like a little, little mountain. So uh, uh, 24 hours before we had to do the presentation in Paris, where there's coming a thousand, two thousand people, what are we going to do? And we ended up putting all the boobies on sticks. So it became, and we put all models under the sticks. Uh, so it was kind of becoming more like a Garden of Eden. and. Uh, paradise and there was a new perspective to all this. I think it actually became much stronger and a better project and it was not planned to. Music has been one, like there was a lot of identity towards how the music thing was going on for me and how I, when I was a teenager, suddenly there was different codes and signals in that little group of the, uh, our music. We had a certain style, you had to wear that. There was also something about the books, which films you had to do. And I suddenly realized that there was a lot about uh, identity and characters and in the whole music thing, which kind of led me kind of into the whole uh, clothing business. Clothing is one of the fastest communicators uh, how we appear, the codes, the signals we are sending to each other about actually appearing. I think it's about where you feel safe and, and how, you, how you appear and how you communicate to other people what you hopefully think. And you can communicate a lot without talking. The most important thing is like how clothing is maybe, maybe still one of the fastest communicators. How we are sending codes, signals to what we wear, to how we are uh, performing to how we appear. Eight years ago I was doing presentations and I was not really happy about what I was doing and uh, it seemed so uh, only one direction. It didn't have the perspective of a whole universe and I'm working pretty concept-like and it was like I was just standing with a halfway uh, and I was, that's where I started, hey maybe I could you know instead of only creating uh, like 2D maybe we can think of the whole world of uh, all senses with food, smells, music, uh, all, trying to put all kind of things into the project. And actually doing, a, you know, my, my metier is textiles. Maybe I could use textiles in, instead of only using it as 3D architecture, clothing, textile. Maybe I could actually, you know, change the, the room, the space. This is a project uh, called the Mind Institute. It's also like a backdrop from an old show I did. Uh, it was the idea of just starting researching in the color mint. Uh, and it's like, okay, how does mint music look like? How does the mint food, uh, is there mint structure? 
Uh, could we do a mint dance? Uh, could we create a blown up mint structure? Um, so just something that was a little bit out of, and it was like very difficult to control air and fabric. It's a tricky business in general being creative. Uh, I think people just have to, uh, in general, just keep on going, trust in themselves. Uh, hopefully um, it would make sense in, at some point. Maybe you're not gonna end up being a super duper designer, but maybe uh, the things you have learned you can use in other ways.